So now I'm looking at a couple of additional interviews. It's a pre-launch interview from 1969 and then also quickly add um, a later interview from 1989. Here I want to establish more a baseline and say this behavior is consistent with this 1970 interview and said his teammates behave quite differently. This is astronaut Neil Armstrong, command pilot for the Apollo 11 moon landing mission. He doesn't look particularly happy, he's pressing his lips together, he is ducking a little bit, his shoulders are raised quite high. So he's not very comfortable here in this position. What is the purpose of the Apollo 11 mission? Apollo 11. So again, pressing the lips together, it's normally a sign of regret. However, compared to the 1970 interview, he looks much thinner here. This man's first attempt to demonstrate the ability. So he's looking again to the right, apparently to the audience, how he did it in 1970. To go to the moon, to land there and to return to Earth. What are your responsibilities as commander of Apollo 11? Well, in Looking to the right down, so here he's, his responsibility is independent if the moon landing was fake, he should have to remember these. So according to NLP, he should be looking to his left, but he's looking to his right. So here again, he's accessing memory and looking to the right as so his baseline. In, uh, in general, the responsibilities of the commander are to make the onboard decisions Looks right. where they're required and to oversee the performance of the duties of all the crew. So again, looking to the right, to the audience, including himself. how he did it in 1970. So, uh, in this particular case, uh, I participate in those procedures on board the spacecraft as well as the specific tasks. So yes, again, some difficulty speaking that uh, I'm charged with the performance of include the monitoring of the launch or procedures should they be re required. Speech error. Manual flying of the booster should that be required. Looks right. And uh, taking my turn at, on on watch in the normal monitoring of the module. In the lunar module. So in a sense it's nice that this interview is set up is quite similar. So it's interview is to his left. And so this is quite similar to the other interview you give. I'm charged almost nearly equally with the lunar module pilot in the operation of the lunar module system. Now the mission is compared to Columbus. Columbus, and uh, of course we recognize uh, his discovery and have honored it in some respects by uh, the call sign of our command module, Columbia. Uh, it's so a lot of uhs and pauses, m uh, and so on. There are some favorable comparisons. And so again, speech error. Terminate at some place that we didn't expect it, some planet that we hadn't. Uh, so these smiles are very genuine. The smile is including his whole face, including the eyes. These are genuine smiles. So this gives um, confidence that what he's saying. Plan to visit. I think we know a good bit about the place that we are going. And... Uh, and it's also uh, so he's finishing his interview in, in, in great confidence. That. Let's look at the other astronauts very briefly to see that they have less trouble talking about everything. Yeah, Mike Collins. The Apollo 11 flight. Obviously, we've opened up uh, a travel system, uh, which is heretofore. He's much more comfortable. He's looking left and right. He has more movement in his neck and head. The option of either walking on the surface of the earth or walking on the surface of so the So there's no signs of no signs of deception here. Let's look at Buzz Aldrin. Pilot for the Apollo 11 moon landing mission. What's the first thing? He's licking his lips a lot. This is sort of his baseline. After landing. One of the first things there's movement in the upper torso. Is, uh, making immediate decisions as to how long we'll be staying. He's looking left and right with his eyes. Several uh, uh, favored uh, abort points that uh, we will be checking very So he's also no uh, problems describing it. Stay or no stay, so there's uh, no the signs of points. deception. But if you occurs, accept uh, this licking of the lips, this is baseline. The next one, uh, about 10 minutes, and the uh, final stay occurs. Uh, so he's using the hands and facial expressions, so these are good signs when he illustrates what he's saying. It's congruent behavior. Preparing the vehicle for a 
Yes, so that's an interview now from 1989 of the three astronauts in the museum in front of the lunar module. So they look quite awkward here in the preparation of this interview. Yeah, they don't look at each other, quite separated somehow. Yeah, from one another. So they look quite awkward. They're fiddling around with their hands. He looks to the right, Collins, but he's not responding. When he is speaking, somehow Aldrin is not turning his head. He's briefly turning and then turning it back and looking down, which is always a sign of being dismissive. So overall, they don't look like their friends anymore. So it's really about memories now. So we would expect, according to NLP, that people look to the left. However, you know, we what is more important to establish personal baselines. Apollo 11 was filled with uh, vivid experiences. Uh... So again, he has his hand to the left side of his face. That's what he had also in the 1970s interview. He does it a lot. And that comes to mind, in my case, is the uh, flying through the moon shadow and seeing the uh, sun eclipsed by the moon as we approached it. It was a very spectacular sight. Well, I think the uh, thing so, I remember most visually is... Um, Mike is much more eloquent. The ascent stage of the lunar module, the ascent stage of... Eagle. So he's using his uh, eyes, he's looking in all kinds of direction, but mostly straight. The background, seeing, uh, the lunar horizon nice illustrator, uh, pop up above it. which is so congruent the, uh, to what he's saying. So these are clearly proper memories he's accessing. Again, and I, remember that most I think for me the, the most memorable time uh, may not have been one that uh, the, the happening I was most aware of, but I've had occasion to challenge my memory and think back of uh, those first few seconds when Neil and I touched down and, and uh, there was... Uh, there he was seems also quite eloquent, that, uh, he's moving around with his upper torso, to announce to the world that we were there, moving his head. Pause for a moment and things were quiet and we gazed out the window and it was just... A, a so there's no indicators that he's lying or, or deceiving. Right now because I refer back to it so many times. I think perhaps uh, the final descent to the lunar surface was... Uh, so he looks a little bit to the left when he talks about the final For descent. Me, the highlight of the flight is very challenging, uh, a lot but of mostly unknowns. straight. Uh, and uh, it was uh, for a pilot. It, it was uh, a wonderful experience. It's a wonderful experience. Big smile. So there's no indicators that he's deceiving or holding back. Well, every launch uh, day is. Uh, a time of uh, excitement, enthusiasm, and apprehension. So here he looks to the left upper side. So that's now in congruency with the NLP theory, but it doesn't have to. But I think uh, in most circumstances, uh, you always feel Each that error. the chances of actually lifting off are, <laughs> are fairly distant or remote. And, uh, you have to temper your enthusiasm. enthusiasm Speech with, error again. I agree with Neil. There are, there are many different moons so, to, yeah. to remember. The, the one that we see from the Earth, the one that's in route, uh, as we're sort of alone between the sun around with his fingers. and the Earth and the Moon. And as we approach the Moon, it's a different one. When you're in orbit, uh, you look down on it, and it's a rather rough... Very uh, nervous fiddling around. Lonesome, foreboding... Uh, he does this a lot. Well, I would advise him not to take my advice. Uh, it's a very modest response, but this is what Neil says. He's very uncomfortable talking about his, his successes and so on. It's a rapidly changing uh, world. Uh, science and technology evolve at a rapid pace. Also, it's obvious that technology has changed or is changing all the time. We could imagine, you know, how it feels being so far away from Earth, fearing of death and uncertainty, and if one returns home, from the psychological perspective, that must be invaluable um, the experiences for future manned uh, missions. In our simulations, we're accustomed to having a large number of these. Again, very modest answer. It's again a very typical Neil answer. Just talking about simulations instead of what he felt and how he experienced these things. Let's look at a more recent interview when he was in his 70s. Managed to get married, to have a family. Was it a difficult balance for you to maintain both sides of your life? 
the one. So when he's thinking of his family and the past, he looks to the right now, and so he seems to look to the right when he accesses memory. The thing I regret was that my my work required an enormous amount of my time and a lot of travel, and I didn't. So is this a sign of regret? The pressing together of the lips. I get to spend the time I would have liked with my family as they were growing up. How long must it take before I cease to be known as a space man? Why did you make that comment? I guess we all like to be recognized not for one uh, piece of fireworks, but for the ledger of our daily work. So yeah, he just doesn't like talking about his fame. He became a hotshot test pilot flying the famous X-15 at 4,000 miles an hour to the edge of the atmosphere. It was during that time in 1962 when he faced his most difficult test, losing his two-year-old daughter Karen to brain cancer. Did that affect your work at that time? Some people, when they're hit with a tragedy like that, they pour themselves on the door. Yeah. It's, it's difficult for me to... To know. Uh, it's of course a very awkward response, yeah? I mean, he should know how he felt when his daughter died. This again shows how awkward Neil Armstrong is in communicating his expressions and feelings in talking about personal issues. Uh, I, uh, so he looks to the right again when he's trying to access feelings, expressions from a long time ago. I thought the best thing for me to do in that situation was to uh, continue with my work keep things as normal as, as I could and very bad answer of course as try as I, hard as I could not to uh, not of course it sounds very insensitive to have it affect my ability to do useful things yeah that's doesn't not an easy good. thing to do how, how do you think you did uh, at the time I thought the family was handling it well and I was uh, I ah, bad answer okay so that's Neil Armstrong how he talks about his personal feelings and um, impressions from a long time ago. So in summary, I very much think Neil Armstrong and his two fellow astronauts did go to the moon in 1969 and said these various red flags, which are mainly in Neil's interviews and not in the other two guys' interviews, are just related to his reluctance to be um, an American hero and celebrity and said his behavior, the way he looks, the way he touches his face, um, the speech errors, that say even in the pre-launch conference as well as in later interviews. So this is basically a very strange baseline we have to work with in order to establish any abnormalities. After all, it's super hard to fake a moon landing. In particular, there were six flights to the moon, Apollo 11 to 17 and 13 didn't make it. And from each of the six successful Apollo missions, two astronauts were walking on the moon. The whole thing was only possible because around 400,000 people working on these flights and they cost billions of dollars. So I believe this is impossible to fake and doesn't do any justice to all the marvelous accomplishments. A lot of Neil's odd behavior you can see already to his response to his child's death and also about his advice to future astronauts, basically saying they shouldn't follow his advice. And so this is the way Neil Armstrong works. Let's finally look at his signature. So the A is this really big bulky object here. Whether it's true or not, this might have to do with the flight plan. It might actually resemble a slingshot approach to the moon. And even if it's so, whether it's conscious or subconscious, but often in signatures of famous people, you see an impression of their main accomplishments. And here, I believe you can see even the trajectory of the flight path in Niels Armstrong's signature. Okay, I hope you liked my analysis and talk to you next time. Bye.